Hey guys, it's Callie. Today I'm going to show you how I made these super cool mandala sun catchers out of old CDs that I had laying around and recycled beads. They look freaking amazing and I am so happy. They were really easy to make. So if this is inspiring to you and you'd like to see how I did it, I was totally inspired by Pinterest and uh, this is my take on it. So stick around if you want to see how I did it. Okay guys, before we get started, let me show you some of the things that you're going to need. Definitely you're going to need some old CDs and DVDs do not work. So make sure that you get CDs. You are going to use some duct tape. If you don't have duct tape, you can use masking tape, but it doesn't work quite as well, but it will work. You're going to need a pair of scissors. You're going to need either from the internet, you can Google mandalas and find millions of them. So I just Googled one that's about CD sized. If you want to trace your mandala, you can do something like this. I draw mine freehand and this is an example and this is what we'll be working with today, but I use some graph paper to do that as well as a compass to make my circles. If you don't have a compass, you could trace around your tape, anything circular. Um, you know, it's easy to find things to trace around to make circles. So you, you'll need your mandala. You're going to need something to bring color to your mandala. And I'm going to show you three different examples of ones that I did, but we're only going to work with one today. I'm going to show you how to make the easiest one, but I did do three different kinds. The first one that I did, I used some of this gallery glass simulated liquid leading with these glass stains. And that gives you a simulated stained glass look. Um, I'll show you here. So something like this. You know what? Let me put a white piece of paper. Okay, that's was done with these as well as this one. And I think that's all I did with the liquid glass. Oh no, I did a flower too. Hang on. And they really do look like stained glass. And they look beautiful when the light shines through them. But this was the most difficult to work with. I had to lay down the liquid leading first and you literally just trace with it. Comes out just like paint. And you let that dry overnight and then you fill in the spots just like you're doing stained glass with this liquid glass stain. I'm sure the deco art glass markers or you know any of those types of things would work well also. This is just what I happen to have but I didn't have as much control with these honestly you guys and I am going to work with these but I wanted to show you just because I did try it but this was my least favorite method because the stain ran and the colors bled and I didn't have as much freedom of design working with the leading because I had to really keep it to big shapes but it's an option and if you want to do an abstract design or something with that it could come out great. The second one that I'm going to show you that I did I made with uh, silk acrylic glazes. So I did this one and it's just beautiful. But this I also laid down the liquid leading for the, you know, the framework of it. You could see it better on the back, the black, okay? And then when that dried, the next morning I went in with my silk acrylic glazes and just filled in the spots just like I did with the leaded glass ones, just with a regular brush. I did have to use, on this one, I did three coats because it was so streaky each time that I really wanted it to be more opaque. But this came out beautiful, I think, but it was, again, a lot of work. You had to wait for the leading to dry and things like that. But if you, you know, I think it's gorgeous, so I'll definitely be using this, but this was not the most simple method. 
So that's an option. And same thing, you'll trace your mandala design and then just fill it in with color. These are the ones that we're going to be working on today, you guys. And these are the ones that I had the most fun with and that were the easiest to do. And I made these with Sharpie markers. Good old Sharpies. Any alcohol marker will work. They allowed me the freedom of intricate designs. These I did just freehand designs out of my head. I knew I wanted a sun. And this was the first one that I did. The one thing about the Sharpies, and it's great for kids too, you know. The only thing about the Sharpies for me, because I wanted the vibrancy of the color, I wound up coloring both sides of the CD. And I actually did go over these with a uh, coat of sealer. And I'm really pleased with the way they turned out. So this is the one I'm going to be actually will show you this design today. This is the one we're going to be working on today. But I encourage you to, you know, do your own research, find your own mandala patterns, go with what works for you. But you could certainly follow along. And that's it. for supplies what you'll need. Now, you're also going to need, uh, as far as embellishments go, you can hang these however you'd like. You can hang them on fishing line. You can hang them on wire. Um, I like I made charms for mine that I want to dangle. So I'll show you some of the charms that I've made. And we're actually going to be using these to connect the CDs. Some of them um, we will put together with a charm in between. And then maybe a charm on the bottom and you know beads on top or something like that this is where you can really let your imagination go wild you guys you can embellish these however you want you can hang them singly if you want you could hang ribbon you can you know just let your mind go crazy here this is the fun of it but if you are going to do the little charms and there's a million tutorials on charms but if you choose to do them you're going to need some sort of wire I have heavier gauge wire that I've actually gotten from the dollar store. This is real silver wire that I've used in jewelry making. I used some beads with my charms, some of them. I did do uh, little, I mean marbles, hello. I did little marble wraps. I have also used galaxy stones that I've done tutorials on in the past. Um, and this is with that heavier wire. So I've used those. If you don't want to use those, use the beads of your choice. I have a bazillion beads. These are just the ones I pulled out. Um, these are old crystals from a chandelier. I have some head pins here to make uh, these kind of charms. The, you know, the ones that go in between. We're also going to need some jump rings. Like I said, fishing line if you want. Um, some different types of pliers and I'm also using my Dremel to drill holes to hang our beads however you choose to make holes but be aware that these can crack very easily and obviously I'm going to be using my safety goggles so this is what we have for supplies I'm gonna get right back to you and we're gonna start making like I said we're gonna make this one today and I'll show you how to do it. See you in a second. Okay, so let's get started. And I apologize, I got started without you. I didn't realize this was my last CD, so I had to save it to show you what we're going to do. You're going to need the CD. You're going to need a piece of duct tape or any strong tape. Rip it off. And then you're going to need something sharp. I just used my scissors. And you want to, don't scratch too deep, but you want to, Put a little scratch through this coating here on the CD, all right? It just makes it easier for the tape to lift it up. And you can see I've already gotten started here. You're going to just press this tape down onto the coating and you're going to rip it up. And <laughs> that didn't work well at all. Sometimes it takes a little bit and you'll have these little pieces of holographic tape all over your house. Because, see? So it pulls off. And you just go all the way around. And this is great, right? You want to save it for embellishments or something. But just kind of 
it's tedious, right? You just go all the way around, and if you feel like you need to do another scrape in it, do another scrape in it. There we go. That was a big one. Okay, so get your CD totally bare, and I'll meet you back here when mine is too. See you in a second. Okay, guys, I'm back with an update, and I had to laugh because you know how it is when you're filming a tutorial, or maybe you don't know, but anything that can go wrong will go wrong. It is totally Murphy's Law. So let me just tell you what just happened. I shared with you that the CD that I was working on was the last one I had to work with, right? I did seven of these previously and never had a problem. I started out fine. I was able to get all the holographic prettiness off of the CD. And then right around the center hole, the white paint would not come off. So I said, oh, that's okay. That's fine. I have some acetone. I'll use my acetone polish remover. Well, look what it did to the CD, you guys. And even though I was like, all right, well, okay, I'll work with it because it kind of looks cool, right? It like melted the plastic and it was not a good idea. Well, as I was thinking, oh, I'll just use it, the end snapped off. So I now have tape on it because I need to use this for our demonstration purposes. But like I said before, I did seven of these prior and did not have a problem. But of course, as I'm trying to show you, but just be prepared if something like this happens, maybe you could try to make it work. But I wanted to share that with you. I'll be right back and I'll show you how we're going to trace our mandala. See you in a minute. Okay, let's get started with our mandala. I told you guys, you have a few options. You can print something offline. And if you do do that, it's the same technique. You're going to take your now naked CD that hopefully, hopefully looks better than mine does. And you're just going to tr put it over the top of it. And you're going to trace it. And I love black Sharpies for everything. And every technique that I showed you, I started with the black Sharpie just to get the outline. And you literally just trace the design onto the CD. Now that's fine if you want. Or you can make your own mandalas. And that's what I did here with this one. And it's going to be the same technique. We're just going to place it over. And you're going to, you're going to draw directly onto the CD. So this was the one that I had the most fun with. And you're just going to, you know, trace out the whole design. Once you get your design, of course. And then this is going to be the template that you're going to use to color your mandala. So to get this, you know, every mandala is unique. And all I did was I took a piece of graph paper and my handy dandy compass. And like I said, if you don't have a compass, you can use circles of all shapes and sizes, but I just, um, actually the first thing I did was I traced around my CD and I found a center point on my graph paper. Uh, if you don't have graph paper, you can make your own by drawing lines or whatever, but, um, you don't need it. It's just tools to make it a little easier. So I just traced around my CD. Um, you could do it with a pencil, whatever you want. So you know what you're working with. Okay. And then I took my compass and I just put the center point in the middle and I, I drew a series of circles around as compasses help you do, whoop, stay in the center, Callie. Okay, and within those circles, I did a series of the same designs over and over again. So I did little flowers or, you know, you want to try to, I use the lines as a guide to kind of keep things symmetrical, if you will. You can just draw your flower petals in or look at pictures that you see online, you know, use your imagination. Let your muse guide you and you'll come up with designs. And like I said, if you can't, then there are plenty of sources of inspiration. So on and on and on, this is what I wound up with for the one that I wanted to work on today. 
So you get your mandala done, regardless of what it is, put it on top, trace around it. And then when you have your lines all traced out, like I said, you can go in with that black leading if you want. The silk acrylic glazes, you could probably use nail, you know, well, I wouldn't use nail polish with what just happened with the acetone, but acrylic paint, anything you want, but you want it to be a little translucent. So like I said, Sharpies are my favorite. And you're just going to take your nail designs and start coloring them in, you guys. And it's that simple. And like I said, I did a few coats because I wanted it to be very, very opaque, you know, as opaque as I could make it. But, you know, use your judgment. And like I said, when one side was dry, I just flipped it over and I did the other side. And I didn't have to heat set them or anything. You know, I didn't try to smudge them. But once they were dry, just a few minutes, I didn't have any problems with smudging or smearing or anything. And like I said, I was able to give them, I'll show you the um, a, a sealer that I used. So you're going to color in your design. It's that simple with whatever medium you choose to do. And once you are done to your satisfaction, and again, I recommend doing both sides. I let mine sit overnight. Um, it was hard. These were really fun. Um, they got addicting to do. So once you get all your designs colored up, I'll show you the next step and um, that's going to be drilling some holes. So get your Dremel and your safety goggles ready. Okay. So now we're going to drill the holes where we're going to hang our charms from. So you basically want one at the top and one at the bottom and you can string two of these together. You could do six of them together if you want, but for this purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to do just the one. And this one's hanging, you know, it's holding out. So I'm going to use it. Uh, keep your fingers crossed. So I have my Dremel here and I have a pretty small uh, drill bit on it. I couldn't tell you what size it is. Mm, an eighth? I don't know. I also have my handy dandy safety goggles. And you guys, please be careful. I'm going to put these on. And I'm, all, I'm also going to make sure that my hair is back and away. Um, keep your fingers out of the way. It's going to get noisy for a minute, but I'm just going to, I have this on a cutting board so I don't drill through my table. So I'm just going to drill a little hole here at the top and one at the bottom. So it's going to get noisy. Hang on. It was that simple, you guys. So you could see. Have a little hole here. And this is where we're going to hang our charms from. So I will be attaching uh, something, a hanger like that at the top, just with some jump rings, as well as something to dangle from the bottom. So maybe something like this. And if you'd like me to do a separate video on how to make charms, I will happily do that. But Trust and believe there are a million videos out there right now. Um, but basically, I just, you know, to do these top ones, I took a head pin and I put a couple of beads on the head pin and literally just took my little round nose pliers and folded it over and then twist it around and then you cut off the excess. And that's literally how I make my little baubles. And these wrapping ones, I guess I will show you, um, are super easy with the thick wire, especially um, if I wanted to do a marble, I'm just going to do a little spiral. So same thing. And you guys, I am by no means a jewelry maker or expert at any of this stuff, but just start spiraling your wire around and this will be the base of your marble. Kind of holding it in. And then literally, you guys, I just take it and hold it in there and kind of wrap this wire around. And it takes a little messing with, but it's very easy to work with. 
and literally that's it. And I will cut off a little at the top here and do the same thing. Make another spiral and that will hold the cage. So use your imagination. You can hang uh, feathers, you could do ribbon, you can do anything, any other little pieces of jewelry that you have around. So that was a quick marble wrap for you, okay? But yeah, let your imagination be your guide. I will see you back here when I have all my CDs drilled and ready to string, and then I'm going to hang them up and show you how they look hanging up. So I'll see you in just a minute. Okay, everything is drilled and nothing broke, luckily. <laughs> so now we're going to hang the charms and I'll, I'll show you a couple examples. I just did a few really quick to show you uh, using the, the beads that I put together on the head pin before. Let your imagination be your guide, you guys. Like I said before, you could hang feathers. You could hang more than one of these together. Um, you know, anything you want. And you can hang either with fishing line from this top loop. Um, I like to unbend a paper clip on a lot of my things and I'll hang them from a wire on my window. Um, you can use an old key ring if you want to put up there just for a stronger loop. So I'm going to finish uh, adding the charms to each one of these. And I'll show you really quick just how I did that. I mean, I, I assume it's self-explanatory, but maybe you don't know. So here's one of our CDs that I love. And I just have some large jump rings here. If you don't have jump rings, it's very easy to make your own, believe it or not. But twist them sideways open. And I'm just going to put it in the one of the holes that we drilled. And I like to do two jump rings because they swing better, I think, more freely. So we did that one. And then this one is going to have the charm in it. So this is what we're going to hang from. And I'm just... And closing it up and make sure you got it even and there you have it that's that and then we're gonna do the same on the bottom but I'm gonna do a different angle I love these you guys and I think you are going to love them too so again open the second one Here's a charm I made out of one of those chandelier pieces and a bead, two beads and some wire. We're just going to loop it in and close it up. And if your jump rings are too hard, you can use two pliers. But look at that, you guys. How beautiful is that? You know you want that hanging in your window. So I'm going to finish doing every every other one. And I think I'm going to leap <laughs> link uh, one or two together just to show you that option. And I'm going to hang them up and I'll show you what we got. So I'll see you in just a second. Oh, yeah. And you guys, you can use a spray gloss over these uh, if you want. And it works really nice as a sealant. So I used uh, Americana sealant in matte. I'll show you in a second what I used. Just to show you really quick, this is what I use. The Americana acrylic sealer in matte. I also have glossy. You could use that. I did have to let them dry overnight, but it did work well. So... That's what I used. Okay, I wanted to show you one before that's completed before I hang it up, and I love this. So as you can see, I just strung two together, and for the top to hang it, which I didn't show you guys before, you have a number of options, but I like to use little key rings. So I just take an empty key ring and thread it through the head pin hole, or you can use some monofilament thread like fishing line. Um, I can't even see it. To hang them, you could unbend a paper clip and make a little hook, something like that. So I'm going to finish stringing these up and then I'm going to hang them in the window and I'll show you guys what we got. But aren't they beautiful? I'm really, really happy with this. I hope you are too. See you in a second. Just giving you a little close-up action before I hang this one up.
I'm in love with these, you guys. Look at the holographic effect. Uh, yeah, can you tell I had a good time making these? All right, I'm going to hang it up. See you in a minute. Okay, guys, I have them all hung up, and they're starting to sway a little bit. They just look beautiful. The more I see them, the more I'm in love with them. I really, really hope this has inspired you to do your own. Again, if you do, give me a shout-out. I would love it. I would love to see them, and I'm really psyched about these, so... I hope you've enjoyed this video, and give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll talk to you guys really, really soon. Mm -hmm.